I took advantage of being at the seaside to lay in a store of sucking stones. They were pebbles, but I call them stones. Yes, on this occasion I laid in a considerable store and distributed them equally between my four pockets and sucked them turn and turn about. This gave rise to a problem which I first solved in the following way. I had, say, 16 stones, four in each of my four pockets. That is to say, the two pockets of my trousers and the two pockets of my greatcoat. Drawing a stone from the right pocket of my greatcoat and putting it in my mouth, I replaced it in the right pocket of my greatcoat by a stone from the right pocket of my trousers which I replaced by a stone from the left pocket of my trousers, which I replaced by a stone from the left pocket of my greatcoat, which I replaced by the stone that was in my mouth as soon as I had finished sucking it. Thus, there were still four stones in each of my four pockets, but not exactly the same stones. And when the desire to suck took hold of me again, I drew again on the right pocket of my greatcoat, certain of my not taking the same stone as the last time. And while I sucked it, I rearranged the other stones in the way I have just described, and so on. This solution did not satisfy me fully, for it did not escape me that by an extraordinary hazard, the four stones circulating thus might always be the same stones in which case, far from sucking the 16 stones turn and turn about, I was in fact sucking only four, always the same, turn and turn about. But I shuffled them well in my pockets before I began to suck, and again while I sucked before transferring them, in the hope of obtaining a more general circulation of the stones from pocket to pocket. But this was only a makeshift, which could not long content a man like me. So I began to look for something else. And the first thing I hit upon was that I might do better to transfer these stones four by four instead of one by one. That is to say, during the sucking, to take the three remaining stones from the right pocket of my greatcoat and replace them by the four from the right pocket of my trousers and these by the four from the left pocket of my trousers and these by the four from the left pocket of my greatcoat. And finally, the three from my right pocket of my greatcoat plus the one as soon as I had finished sucking it which was in my mouth. Yes, it seemed to me at first that by so doing I would arrive at a better result. But on further reflection I had to change my mind and confess that the circulation of the stones four by four came to exactly the same thing as their circulation one by one. For if I was certain of finding each time within the right pocket of my greatcoat four stones totally different from their immediate predecessors, the possibility nevertheless remained of my always chancing on the same stone within each group of four, and consequently of my sucking not the sixteen turn and turn about as I wished, but in fact four only, always the same turn and turn about. So I had to seek elsewhere than in the mode of circulation. For no matter how I caused the stones to circulate, I always ran the same risk. It was obvious that by increasing the number of my pockets I was bound to increase my chances of enjoying my stones in the way I planned that is to say one after the other, until their number was exhausted. 
had I eight pockets, for example, instead of the four I did have, then even the most diabolical hazard could not have prevented me from sucking at least eight of my sixteen stones turn and turn about. The truth is I should have needed sixteen pockets in order to be quite easy in my mind. And for a long time I could see no other conclusion than this. That short of having sixteen pockets, each with its stone, I could never reach the goal I had set myself, short of an extraordinary hazard. And if at a pinch I could double the number of my pockets, were it only by dividing each pocket in two with a few safety pins, let us say, to quadruple them seemed to be more than I could manage, and I did not feel inclined to take all that trouble for a half measure, for I was beginning to lose all sense of measure after all this wrangling, and to say, All or nothing. And if I was tempted for an instant to establish a more equitable proportion between my stones and my pockets by reducing the former to the number of the latter, it was only for an instant. For it would have been an admission of defeat. And sitting on the shore before the sea, the sixteen stones spread out before my eyes. I gazed at them in anger and perplexity. For just as I had difficulty in sitting on a chair, or in an armchair, because of my stiff leg, you understand, so I had none in sitting on the ground, because of my stiff leg, and my stiffening leg, for it was about this time that my good leg, good in the sense that it was not stiff, began to stiffen. I needed a prop under the ham, you understand and even under the whole length of the leg, the prop of the earth. And while I gazed thus at my stones revolving interminable martingales all equally defective, and crushing handfuls of sand so that the sand ran through my fingers and back onto the strand, yes, while thus lulling my mind and part my body, one day suddenly it dawned upon the former Dimly. that I might perhaps achieve my purpose w without increasing the number of my pockets or reducing the number of my stones, but simply by sacrificing the principle of trim. The meaning of this illumination, which suddenly began to sing within me like a verse of Isaiah, or oh, Jeremiah, I did not penetrate at once, notably the word trim, which I had never met with in this sense, long remained obscure. Finally, I seemed to grasp that this word trim, trim could not here mean anything else, anything better, than the distribution of the sixteen stones in four groups of four, one group in each pocket, and that it was my refusal to consider any distribution other than this that had vitiated my calculations until then, and rendered the problem literally insoluble. And it was on the basis of this interpretation, whether right or wrong, that I finally reached a solution that was a solution, inelegant, assuredly, but sound, sound. Now, I am willing to believe, indeed I firmly believe, that other solutions might have been found no less sound but much more elegant than the one I am about to describe, if I can. And I believe had I been a little more insistent, a little bit more resistant, I might have found them myself. But I was tired, but I was tired and I contented myself ingloriously with the first solution that was a solution to this problem. But not to go through all the heartbreaking stages through which I passed. Here it is, in all its hideousness. All, all that was necessary was to put, for example, to begin with, six stones 
in the right pocket of my greatcoat. And five stones in the right pocket of my trousers. And five stones in the left pocket of my trousers. That makes the lot. Twice five, ten, plus six, sixteen. And none, for none remained, in the left pocket of my greatcoat, which for the time being remained empty. Empty of stones, that is, for its usual and casual contents remained, as well as other objects. For where do you think I hid my uh, vegetable knife, my silver, and my horn, and other things I have not yet named, perhaps shall never name? Good. Watch me closely. I take a stone from the right pocket of my greatcoat, suck it, stop sucking it, and put it in the left pocket of my greatcoat. I take a second stone from the right pocket of my greatcoat, suck it, put it in the left pocket of my greatcoat, and so on, until the right pocket is again empty of stones, apart from its usual and casual contents. And pausing now and concentrating so as not to make a balls of it, I transfer to the right pocket of my greatcoat, now again empty of stones. The five stones in the right pocket of my trousers, which I replace by the five stones in the left pocket of my trousers, which I replace by the six stones in the left pocket of my greatcoat. At this stage, therefore, the left pocket of my greatcoat is again empty of stones, and the right pocket of my greatcoat is again supplied and in the right way, that is to say, with stones other than those I have just sucked. These other stones I then begin to suck one after the other and transfer as I go along to the left pocket of my greatcoat, being absolutely certain, as far as one can be in an affair of this kind, of not sucking the same stones as a moment before, but others. And when the right pocket of my greatcoat is again empty of stones, and the five I have just sucked are all without exception in the left pocket of my greatcoat, I then proceed to the same redistribution as a moment before, or similar redistribution. That is to say, I transfer to the right pocket of my greatcoat, now again available, the five stones in the right pocket of my trousers, which I replace by the six stones in the left pocket of my trousers, which I replace by the five stones in the left pocket of my greatcoat. And there I am, ready to begin again. Do I need to go on? No, for it is clear that after the next series of sucks and transfers, I shall be back where I started. That is to say, with the first six stones in the supply pocket, the next five in the right pocket of my stinking old trousers, and finally, the last five in the left pocket of the same. And my 16 stones will have been sucked at least once in impeccable succession, not one sucked twice, not one left unsucked. It is true that I could scarcely hope to suck my stones in the same order as the first time, and that the first, seventh and twelfth of the first cycle might very well be the sixth, eleventh and sixteenth of the second, respectively, if the worst came to the worst. But that was a drawback I could not avoid. And if in the cycles taken together, utter confusion was bound to reign, at least within each cycle taken separately, I could be easy in my mind, as easy as one can be in a proceeding of this kind. For in order for each cycle to be identical as to the succession of stones within my mouth, and God knows I'd set my heart on it, the only means were numbered stones or 16 pockets. And rather than make 12 more pockets or number my stones, I preferred to make the best of the comparative peace of mind I enjoyed within each cycle taken separately.
for it was not enough to number the stones, but I'd have to remember, every time I put a stone in my mouth, the number I needed, and look for it in my pocket. Which would have put me off stone forever in a very short time. For I would never have been sure of not making a mistake. Unless, of course, I kept a kind of register in which to tick off the stones one by one as I sucked them. And of this I believed myself incapable. No. The only perfect solution would have been the 16 pockets, symmetrically disposed, each one with its stone. Then I would have needed neither to number nor to think. But merely as I sucked a given stone to move on the 15 others, each to the next pocket, a delicate business, admittedly, but within my power, and to call always on the same pocket when I felt like a suck. This would have freed me from all anxiety, not only within each cycle taken separately, but also for the sum of all cycles, though they went on forever. But however imperfect my own solution was, I was pleased at having found it all alone. Yes, quite pleased. And if it was perhaps less sound than I had thought in the first flush of discovery, its inelegance never diminished. And it was above all inelegant in this, to my mind, that the uneven distribution was painful to me, bodily. It is true that a kind of equilibrium was reached at a given moment in the early stages of each cycle, namely after the third suck and before the fourth. But it did not last long. And the rest of the time I felt the weight of the stones dragging me now to one side and now to the other. So it was something more than a principle I abandoned when I abandoned the equal distribution. It was a bodily need and to suck the stones in a way I have described, not haphazard, but with method, was also, I think, a bodily need. Here then were two incompatible bodily needs at loggerheads. Such things happen. But deep down I didn't give a tinker's curse at being off my balance, dragged to the right hand and to the left, backwards and forwards. And deep down it was all the same to me, whether I sucked a different stone each time or always the same stone to the end of time, for they all tasted exactly the same. And if I had collected sixteen it was not in order to ballast myself in such and such a way or to suck them turn about but simply to have a little store so as never to be without. But deep down I didn't give a fiddler's curse about being without, for when they were all gone they would be all gone, and I wouldn't be any the worse off, or hardly any. And the solution to which I rallied in the end was to throw away all the stones but one, which I kept now in one pocket, now in another and which of course I soon lost, or threw away, or gave away, or swallowed.